It's like a tiny horror movie, but it's real. A swarm of angry fire ants attack their prey. They bite and sting, then carry their victim back to the colony. There it's torn apart, and the ants devour their prey. Did you know that this tiny insect can reshape entire ecosystems? That insect is the fire ant, one of the most dangerous invasive species in the world. But why are these ants so successful at conquering new territories? Let's find out. First, let's figure out what kind of enemy we're dealing with. The red imported fire ant was once native to South America. Today, thanks to global trade and travel, these ants have successfully colonized multiple continents. Fire ants are extremely aggressive. If disturbed, they will attack anything in their path, including each other. One colony can contain millions of individuals. Red imported fire ants reproduce faster than their native competitors. And if those competitors are weaker, the fire ants simply destroy them. Finally, fire ants are highly adaptable, surviving in various climates and environments. In short, when you combine aggressiveness, high reproductive rates, and adaptability, the result is unstoppable. And in the mid 20th century, fire ants began spreading around the world. So where do these ants come from? It turns out that they've always been there. How does one species displace dozens of others? Let's take a closer look. When a colony of fire ants appears in a new location, they immediately start looking for food. This is the first reason for the decline of native species. Fire ants are highly efficient predators. They eat almost everything they catch, including seeds, fruits, other insects, small vertebrates, and even other ants. Yes. That means they attack not only their insect competitors, but also creatures that have nothing to do with their rivalry. Fire ants kill anything that could become their prey. If the fire ants show up in an area with native ants, the outcome is obvious. If the local ants are weaker than the fire ants, they stand absolutely no chance. If they're stronger, the invaders simply avoid them. For example, in Australia, where the ant species Myrmica rubra lives, fire ants bypass this creature. Why? Because the locals don't hesitate to attack and eat fire ants. In some cases, the local ants even organize ambushes waiting for the fire ants to bring food back to their colony and stealing their hard-earned dinner. As a result, the native ant species survives, while the rest of the insects simply disappear. For example, in the Brazilian Atlantic forest, after the invasion of fire ants, native ants disappeared from the forest floor within two years. Fire ants are so ruthless that they even go after their own relatives. In nature, there are many species of predatory ants, but none of them are as cruel as fire ants. If a wandering fire ant finds itself on the territory of another colony, it will be attacked and killed by the defenders. And if the intruder is a queen, the entire colony may switch to a war footing and wipe out the foreign colony. Okay, so what happens to the species that fire ants don't eat? As it turns out, these creatures also suffer greatly from the appearance of red imported fire ants. This is the second reason for the negative impact on the native species. Fire ants are relentless. They eliminate not only those who are weaker than them, but also those who are indifferent to them. Take, for example, the Madagascar hissing cockroach. Its colonies suffer great losses from encounters with fire ants. Cockroaches simply can't win this battle. The number of hissing cockroaches drops sharply. And since these cockroaches are carriers of essential nutrients for the soil, the entire ecosystem suffers from their disappearance. And it's not just about insects. Amphibians, reptiles, and even small birds that eat insects also suffer from fire ant attacks. The third reason why fire ants have such a devastating impact on ecosystems is that they re simply too numerous. One colony can have over one million individuals. Such a large colony requires a lot of food, so the fire ants begin to look for it everywhere, destroying everything in their path. For example, in the southern United States, fire ants target turtle nests. These ants can't eat turtles, but they don't hesitate to devour their eggs. Some species of turtles have been on the brink of extinction due to the appearance of fire ants, but it's not just about numbers. Fire ants completely change the conditions under which other species live. Take, for example, the Brazilian wandering spider. It's an apex predator in its ecosystem, but when fire ants invaded its habitat, the spider became endangered. The thing is that the spider preys mainly on insects, and fire ants kill all the insects. Without food, the spiders were forced to move further and further away from their comfortable homes, 
dying along the way. But the most interesting thing is that fire ants don't just eat insects, they actually raise some of them. For example, they protect aphids and scale insects, which feed on plant sap. Usually, ladybugs, lacewings, and other predators eat aphids, but the fire ants fiercely defend their wards. As a result, the number of pests that feed on plant juices increases dramatically. And this leads to the destruction of crops and vegetation weakening. So in addition to destroying individual species, fire ants change the balance of the entire ecosystem. All this leads to serious long-term consequences. The first consequence is a decrease in local biodiversity. Fire ants destroy not only certain species, but entire groups of organisms. In some regions, they cause the extinction of several species of small beetles and ground beetles. And on the island of Guam, they were the cause of the extinction of the extremely rare Mariana Island fly. Not this. Over time, a vicious circle turns out. Fewer species means less food for the remaining ones, which in turn makes them more vulnerable to fire ants. And this leads to the next long-term consequence. In areas invaded by fire ants, the number of insects capable of pollinating plants decreases. Plants suffer from lack of pollination, which leads to lower yields or death. The food chain is broken. Fewer insects means less food for insect-eating animals and so on. What else can fire ants cause? Of course, the breakdown of natural ecological roles. Fire ants are not only ruthless predators, but also excellent builders. They build their underground colonies near the surface of the earth, which allows them to capture vast territories in a short amount of time. And in the process of construction, they destroy underground habitats of other creatures, including endangered species like the Florida scrub lizard. In addition, fire ants steal food from other animals, which can lead to starvation of local wildlife. The consequences of the invasion of red imported fire ants are so dire that scientists have even called them the... After these ants appeared in the southern United States, they quickly spread throughout the country, causing tremendous damage. In one state alone, Texas fire ants cause damage estimated at over $200 million annually. And according to experts, this figure could reach $5 billion by the end of the 21st century. Yes, that much damage. But how did the fire ants manage to conquer the USA? They came here by ship, specifically on the HMS Beagle in 1842. And Charles Darwin himself noted this event in his diary. However, he couldn't have imagined how big a disaster would follow. Today, these ants have been found in several U.S. states, as well as in Australia, New Zealand, the Canary Islands, Taiwan, and other parts of Asia and the Pacific. And wherever the fire ants appear, they immediately wage war against the native species. It seems that there's nothing left to do, except watch the land they conquer, although maybe there's still a way to stop them. In some regions where fire ants are widespread, scientists have developed special baits to control their populations, the baits contain slow-acting poisons that ants carry back to their colony. This allows you to quickly destroy a large number of individuals, including the queen. However, this method works only if the local species is resistant to the poison. Otherwise, the ants simply exterminate it before it has time to evolve resistance. So it's unlikely that we'll be able to stop the red imported fire ants soon. We can only hope that the local species will be able to adapt and resist the onslaught of the invaders. But you know what? Despite all the harm that fire ants do, they have one advantage. They're a real stimulus for evolution. Creatures that coexist with fire ants are forced to become stronger and more adaptable. Otherwise, they simply won't survive. Well, that's probably the only positive thing about fire ants. But in any case, these insects deserve our attention. Thanks for watching. See you later.